Welcome to Warehouse and Inventory Management. So first of all, I want you to open the slides for this presentation and I want you to go to slide number two and check out this video on YouTube. This is important so that you understand why we do need high quality warehouse management. After you checked out the video, let's continue to slide number 14. Why do we wear why do we need a warehouse? What is a warehouse? Why do we need it? Well, we are right in the beginning of the course, so let's keep it simple. And I quote a very simple definition from the textbook of Bartoli and Hackmann. You also should read this textbook uh, when you study the slides and watch these videos. So Bartoli and Hackmann give a very simple definition, which is quite elegant in my opinion. Though so they say, a warehouse is a point in a supply chain where a product pauses and is touched. Yeah. Imagine our products are moving through the supply chain and every time we reach a warehouse in the supply chain, our product pauses. So you can imagine that a port, for example, is also a kind of warehouse. The product pauses, waits to be loaded onto a ship or unloaded from a ship. Yeah. In a classical warehouse, our products always wait for something. Maybe they wait only a couple of hours, but they might also be waiting there for several months, depending on the type of the warehouse. And the product is touched, we do something with this product. And if it's only putting the product in a shelf, or maybe we do perform some services on the product to add some value to the product. We are concerned with the management of a warehouse and like in every economic subject uh, we use two main resources to deal with our warehouse this is labor and capital what can you think what type of labor do we need for our warehouse of course we have some workers in our warehouse that move around the products that use the tools inside the warehouse but of course we also have people working in the office managers who decide about how the operation should be performed where to store the things uh, people who work with the warehouse management software people who decide about the capacity of the warehouse and how everything in the warehouse should be managed Okay, and on the capital side, the capital includes, of course, all the things we can buy from money. Um, all the, I'm not talking about salary of the workers, but I'm talking about uh, things like, physical things like the land where our warehouse is built, the equipment, the different shelves that are used in our warehouse, the transportation system, the conveyor belts used inside the warehouse, maybe the forklifts used in our warehouse, and also the software system that we use to operate our, our warehouse. And because we use labor and capital as the main resources, many things in our future course will deal with these two types of resources and their impact on each other. What is the purpose of a warehouse? Well, a warehouse can help to match the supply and the demand within a supply chain. So, assume we always exactly know the supply and demand, then there's almost no need for having a warehouse. However, as you all know, 
supply and demand are usually considered stochastic. They are not sure. They might uh, go up and go down. For example, if we introduce a new product, a new smartphone, then we may have some forecast how many of our customers will switch to the new version of this phone. However, we are not sure about this. So based on our forecast, we have to make some decisions. And in order to implement these decisions, it is good when we have some additional um, products on inventory to buffer, to buffer the fluctuations in the demand. So if the demand increases quickly, we can take the items from our warehouse. So our warehouse can protect us against quick demand increases. Yeah. Demand increases uh, can be sudden or follow some seasonalities like uh, the clothing industry. Of course, the seasonalities should be part of our forecasts and come not to a big surprise to us. On the other hand, the warehouse can protect us against a decrease in demand. Yeah. Just take the COVID situation with the sudden and um, the argument between Russia and Saudi, which led to a drastic decrease in oil prices because the um, demand for oil was going down abruptly. We stopped the air transport, we stopped or we reduced the car transport. So the demand for oil went down and Saudi increased the output. So the demand in oil raised and there was a big gap between supply and demand in oil. And then we can put some of our oil that we already extracted from the ground into a warehouse. And in this special case, a special type of warehouse that was also used is storing the oil in oil tankers. So at that time in, in February, March, April, the chartering rates for oil tankers went up to astronomical levels. I think it was almost 250,000 US dollars for one day. Yeah, you see how these warehouses are necessary to buffer supply and demand. Or you might also remember that for one day the oil price went even to negative territory in the United States. And one reason that contributed to this was that all the existing storage capacity in the United States was exhausted and nobody could take the additional oil and store it because all the capacity was already used. So another factor uh, besides supply and demand um, can also help when the transportation situation is unreliable. In particular, when we look at the global transportation all around the world, we often have issues like maybe in ports, some, some uh, taxation issues. The documents might not be correct and um, the border checks might take unexpected time or in some areas of the world uh, the transportation network is rather unreliable. Yeah. The trucks are not available or there are sudden breakdowns or maybe there is bad weather conditions that um, makes transportation impossible and with these events a warehouse can also help to buffer supply and demand. So keep in mind, the warehouse buffers against sudden changes in supply and demand and allows you a quick reaction. And another thing is uh, we can perform some bulk purchases, so meaning we buy our product in larger batches and we might be able to get some discount because we buy so many products and we have to store this on inventory. This is what a warehouse also makes possible. I will present a separate video in the next for the next um, for the next lecture 
about the consolidation function where I need to make a drawing. So for this small introduction we are already done. Keep in mind a warehouse is a point in the supply chain where a product pauses and is touched and also have a look at the textbook from Bartoli and Hackmann, chapter number one. See you soon.